Hey everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and today I've got a, a daily helping of big American Alpha. You really can't go wrong with the tier 9 American turreted tank destroyer. It is of course the T-30. Now the T-30 didn't used to be a tank destroyer back in the day. But this was one of the original tier 10 heavy tanks along with the mouse, vehicles like the AMX 50B, although that did come in slightly afterwards. And of course the IS-7, how could anyone forget about that? Now the T-30, when it used to be a tier 10 American heavy tank, is pretty much the same as it is now. It was just a higher tier and everything was a little bit better. But all the, the key characteristics were the same. You had that 155mm with very good standard penetration. And back then you couldn't fire premium rounds for anything apart from spending gold. Hence the name Gold Rounds, which uh, at least has stuck even though now you can spend them for credits because they're still astronomically expensive and unless you've got a premium account, you're probably not going to be firing too many of them, right? So this alpha damage advantage of 750 combined with the awesome standard penetration of the T-30 made it simply monstrous at tier 10. Although it had a complete lack of armor compared to the IS-7 and the mouse, which kind of held it back when it was in a, a nice matchup against all those juicy tier 8 and even 7 and some tier 6 tanks that the matchmaker used to throw in against tier 10s back in the day. Alright, so while I was streaming this game, uh, something a game very apparent to me, and that is that one of the most simple things that you have to do in World of Tanks. Are you, are you ready for it? You just hold your W key. No, no, seriously. Look at what's happening on the minimap right now. The enemy platoon, all three of their tier 10 heavy tanks, have decided to push aggressively along the north. It's not a bad plan for some IS-7s, right? They're fast, they can get into an aggressive position, they can spot, they can cause mayhem, they hide their lower plate, they've got decent upper hull armor, they're absolutely fantastic. And that's exactly what this platoon on the enemy team has done. They've crossed aggressively along the north, and so the worst thing that we could do along the south is to camp. We have to be aggressive as well. And when you got 750 alpha damage, ooh, it does feel rather sweet when you are aggressive. So I just have to keep holding down my W key as much as I can without, of course, throwing myself in harm's way. I don't want to give uh, the, the Moistian on the enemy team a really easy hit into this rather juicy hull armor. Instead, I want to just chill, wait for a little bit, realize his side armor's great, go for the lower plate, and shut down the tier 9 America. Sorry, German heavy tank. I'm the, I'm the, I'm the American tank destroyer today, right? I'm the tier 9 American tank destroyer. So we've kind of turned this into a bit of a, a, a circle fight, right? They've gone clockwise, and I guess we've gone clockwise as well. It's just uh, some of us started at 3 and some of us started at 9. So we're approaching the enemy's base, and right now I guess I could cap if I wanted to. And yeah, I think if I capped, there were two things going through my mind. One, I kind of want the extra damage and experience inside this game and get all the kills, because I, I think that that's why we're here. Sure, we're here to win, but we're also here to, to kill the enemy tanks, right? But also, I thought that I might need to go back and protect the cap circle because I thought that the enemy platoon was going to cap, because we do have a numerical advantage of two vehicles. So I thought we can get back, we can defend the cap circle, and we should be okay. But look what the enemy platoon are going to do. They're actually pushing out aggressively along the E-line there. Amazing stuff by the enemy team. I'm thinking, should I finish off the Type 61, but I realize somebody else on my team will. So instead I turn my attention towards the Skoda T-50. We put 817 damage into the back of his tank, and we also set him on fire as well. He fires one heat round into us, which does get absorbed in by probably the meaty turret of this vehicle. And then I have a bit of a hesitation. What shall I do? Shall I turn right and then go and set up a defensive location here with my allies? Or alternatively, should I try and flank around and try and dig out maybe the tank destroyer and the medium tanks that are there? And this platoon, they just keep going forward. And look, one of their platoon members hasn't even lost any hit points. Massive respect to the platoon on the enemy team from the VBF campaign. They're doing a great job here. And they're really going to town with the platoon on our team in tier 10 tanks. And while the T-30 can go and duke it out with heavies, especially if it only exposes its turret, I think it's more of a, an ambush tank. It's more of an alpha tank. And I really wanted to go and try and apply pressure to the enemy tanks that were capping. I've lit up that Yag Tiger, I put uh, a big old shell into the side of his vehicle, and I should be able to finish him off with the next one. Really, the only thing that the T-30 doesn't have is damage per minute. 2,142 means that you do need a substantial amount of time between your shots, and that can be very frustrating when you need to pick apart your opponents quickly like the situation requires. So even though we've killed three enemy tanks here, the enemy team is now ahead on vehicles by two. Well, ahead by one. Now we're even. Wow, this game is very frenetic and quickly changing as we shut down the tier 9 Soviet medium tank. And I think 
How are we going to manage to win this one? All right, well, the enemy platoon clearly has to go in and try and interrupt the 257, who looks like he's been capping for uh, well, at least about a minute now. And hopefully, I can use that as a bit of a distraction to get up behind the IS-7s. And what a topsy-turvy game, ladies and gents. We have gone round the, the entirety of this map frequently. I'm just hoping... Oh, there we go. 661, though, a bit of a low roll. I don't think we could have quite managed to be able to shut him down in a single shell. But maybe a fire on an Amarak would have been able to do it. Alright, so do you see me pinging the map here? I'm trying to work together with a Centurion 7 one on my team, whose name is Shoppy. So, it's me and Shoppy versus two tier 10 heavy tanks and a tier 9 medium tank in support. So I'm asking him to go to the ridge line that you see in the B7 area. I've pinged it quite a lot. I'm just trying to, to see if he's going to, to listen and whether we can try and create a plan. So my idea was, enemy team is probably going to be confident. They're in the tier 10 vehicles. They've got a lot of kills between them. These last three players have killed over half of our team. Although, I'm on four kills myself as well, so I'm not too far behind. Hopefully, they're going to be aggressive. They're going to push. And with my binocular setup, we should be able to get a shot here. But I have to admit, at this point, I hesitate. I should have shut down that T-54 with a shot. And I didn't, ladies and gents, and I thoroughly regret it. All right, in these situations, there's no use in being passive. You have to be active. You have to take the fight to the enemy team, which is why you see me lurch forward. I put a shot on the IS-7 there, and even a premium round with 320 millimeters of penetration is unable to go through the tier 10 heavy. I wasn't quite expecting to get spotted, but I guess I should have reacted to the IS-7's vision there. Bit of a misplay there by me, and I don't manage to damage him, but I lose 246 hit points to the T-54, meaning that he's probably using a stock turret and using the stock gun. There you go, there's the stock turret, and oh no, all of my T-30 luck is starting to run out, ladies and gents. But it's not over. Hopefully I can try and get Shoppy in the Centurion 7-1 to assist me, and I go right underneath the IS-7's gun line. Now, where's the other IS-7? Well, I expect that he's actually managing to come round here and try and catch us and flank round. So I've got to be aggressive. I've got to try and shut down this T-54. But I've also got to be mindful of the IS-7 and what they're doing. And they're boom! There we go. Tier 10 heavy tank kit taken care of. The IS-7 looks like he manages to try and gauge Shoppy in the side. Now, Shoppy's only on 30 hit points. Now, I guess I have to try and play aggressively here and sacrifice to be able to hopefully shut down the T-54. You see, I actually lurch into the dip to try and avoid the shell from the IS-7. But unfortunately, I'm still going to take the hit from the IS-7. I put a round through the side of the T-54's turret, now up to a top gun and 5,200 damage. And you can see that big old American Alpha just feels, oh, so satisfying in this situation. All right, so two versus one. I'm asking Shoppy to reload HE. And the reason why I'm asking here, I'm... I'm I'm not asking him to reload HE, I say I'm reloading HE, so a bit of a mistake there by me, I should have typed better, I should have said I'm reloading HE. And all I really need Shoppy to do right now is just relax. If he relaxes, and he just chills, and he stays in the bushes, and he doesn't engage the IS-7 right now, we're going to be absolutely fine. Oh, boys and girls, Shoppy puts 208 damage into the IS-7, they're unsure if it was a Hesh round from the 105mm, or if it was a, ha a penetration from using the 20-pounder, we'll have to take a look at that in the post-game stats. And i just got to be aggressive right now, I've got to hope that the IS-7 thinks that I'm going to be coming round the back of him, and I'm going to slowly come round the corner, and then hopefully I'm going to be able to get a shot in and react and... It looks like he is Han today. And I'm, was it Greedo? Oh, boys and girls, what a heartbreak. Great shot there by the IS-7. Hot shot one around the corner into my hull. He was in this position when he fired. He must have just got the upper hull. And even angled like this, the T-30's armor is not good enough to be able to ricochet. As it's pretty much the same hull as you have on the tier 7 American heavy tank, the T-29. I just needed about half a second more to try and put an HE shell probably anywhere on his upper hull. And I would have been able to take this one. But unfortunately, a heartbreak and me and Shoppy are unable to take this game. All I really needed was for Shoppy to just chill in his Centurion 7-1, but it looks like he got a shot off, and that meant that I was unable to close the distance. Now, I guess in retrospect, I could have been a little bit more cautious in this situation. I guess I could have tried to go hold down and just fire a high explosive round, maybe down onto the IS-7's hull. But the T-30's turret, while it's great, I believe the large caliber gun on the IS-7 is sometimes going to overmatch parts if it doesn't hit the cupola. And really, you're just taking your chances. Maybe you can even get lucky firing in through the cheeks or just hitting this little bar on top of the tank. I decided to hope that the IS-7 was going to turn himself around, think that I was maybe trying to flank in and I was hoping to be able to get the, the rear shot. It just wasn't to be. Nevertheless, this was a very big impact for uh, a mid-tier tank destroyer and hopefully showing you why the T-30 is definitely still a go-to for, for when you just want to hit 
really hard and still be flexible at the same time. So an ace tanker, a top gun here for 811 base experience points and then with courageous resistance that would actually make this uh, about a 1200 and what, what, 62 experience game that would have been the base value if it had been a victory we put all but one shell against an enemy tank and 10 out of 11 of those penetrated. and i guess we can go and take a look to see whether shoppy was firing um the 105 millimeter looks like uh probably was actually using the the, the 20 pounder here as 14 penetrations and 3,000 damage that pretty much adds up so i don't even think that shoppy was using the top gun on this tank and so the final round that he fired wasn't high explosive it would have been armor piercing with that 20 pounder I'm sure if Shoppy had had the 105mm, maybe it would have been a different outcome indeed. Nevertheless, the T-30, boys and girls. An absolute beast of a tank still. I don't think I quite enjoyed as much as when it used to be the tier 10 heavy. <laughs> Back then, nobody would fire premium rounds. It just felt oh so amazing to have what would become tier 9 and tier 10 tank destroyer um, penetration before there were even really tier 10 tank destroyers in the game. And as long as you're careful with the ammunition that you fire, T-30 can could be quite reliable, at least breaking even or even making some credits at tier 9. A final mention should be made to the fact that the enemy platoon, you, you, you guys played this one really well, especially those two IS-7s, 8 kills between them, 9,000 damage dealt between their top two platoon members. They played a real strong game. They, they played an aggressive a attacking formation along the north on a map where it is usually a, a bit of a, a boring map to play and they definitely made this one an, an exciting round of world of tanks and they came through it and they won as well at the end taking me down so well played guys it was a great attack and the final thing that i want to highlight is just how important it is in these kind of situations where all of the power is kind of with the platoon on the enemy team look so they had one tier 10 tank destroyer, three tier 10 heavies all in a platoon, and then two tier 10 self-propelled guns. That's a real big impact that they have to have. They did. But what I really want to highlight is if you see a platoon in a situation like this making an aggressive player around one flank, definitely continue to cut through the others. Kill everything that you can, and then get together to be able to, to hopefully either defend your cap circle or alternatively cap theirs. Anyway, ladies and gents, boys and girls, that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this dose of big american alpha if you did give the video a thumbs up but if you hated it give it a thumbs down and if you're watching this video as it's released on sunday it's time for another world of tanks tech tree showcase on twitch.tv forward slash quickie baby live now and this week you guys have voted for the badger so i'm going to be playing my way through to the tier 10 non-turreted british tank destroyer with the highest damage per minute in the game and so come along right now as i showcase the entirety of of the this british tank destroyer tech tree so you can see if it's a line that's worth playing or alternatively if you already have the tanks either laugh at the misery of me playing a, an incredible tank in the right situation but a very frustrating and inflexible tank in others oh oh just pick up a few tips and tricks and have a few giggles and so i'm really looking forward to seeing as many of you as possible right now on twitch.tv forward slash quickie and as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.